Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Relating 8, Becoming Better Connectors, 8 Minutes at a Time. I'm Dr. Ben Fung, and today we're talking about relationships. Now, I'm going to kind of sidetrack myself a little bit because we've been talking about success, and I wanted to talk about how we can predict success, but more on the relationship side, but we're going to use some business principles that are actually very, very relevant, and I'll tell you why. In business, basically everything we do is metric-based, and there's some art and science to it, but ultimately it's a decision of numbers revolving around human behavioral patterns. What drives somebody to buy? What drives a certain business to compete in a certain way? And one of the frameworks that we've relied on in business for a very long time is called Porter's Five Forces, and essentially it says this. If a company wants to begin or has begun, it is competing with five general forces of the marketplace. The rivals that are in its space, substitute products and services, and threats of new companies coming into the space. All this is bound by what we know from economics of supply and demand. Now, in business, most consultants, including myself, I will tell companies to go to places that have less numbers and intensities of competitive forces because then it's not such an uphill climb. And funny enough, in business, we do this in a very open, transparent way. We take a look at all the cards on the table and then we make the best decisions possible and move forward. But in relationships, I feel current culture has it a little backwards. And I would suggest that dating backwards to the current backwards is the way to date forwards. Because right now, when we date in just general Western culture, Person A and person B, they like each other, they're attracted to each other. They kind of do this tiptoe dance around each other where they date and get to know each other from shallow to deep. And that's not always the most productive way of getting to know somebody because it's kind of like playing the card game of war. You flip cards over and over and over again on the table, going from shallow to deep, hoping there's no conflict and no war breaks out. But that's also a very destructive way to go about it because it's actually much simpler to lay things on the table and date backwards, going from deep to shallow, covering some of the things that matter more than, say, favorite color and toothpaste and sports team. Maybe not sports team. But either way, what you want to cover are what we know are deal makers and deal breakers in relationships. That's how you can foresee if a relationship will be successful, is if you cover the things that really matter and tend to make or break relationships, like family values, or economic values, or political views, or finances, or the value that one places on career or or location of living or any other number of things that tend to break up families and break up relationships to begin with. If you can get those on the table first, you have a much better chance of seeing the bigger picture of all the five competitive forces in a relationship. And they do exist just kind of in a different way than business. It exists in a way where if you have person A trying to date in a you know romantic way of person B, if they have too many areas that seem to be competitive against each other, that will cause a destructive dissonance within the relationship where these become the old things, right? The problem areas, the buttons that we like to push on each other, the oh, they're talking about that thing again, or they're, she's always complaining about this again. These type of areas, you know what I'm talking about. These are the competitive areas where the forces don't unite, rather they divide. And so the best way to go about this is to have an honest, transparent, raw, and rather vulnerable conversation. And whether you're dating somebody now or you're in a spousal relationship for the last 15 years, you can always date that person because it shouldn't stop. Right? It shouldn't stop at any point. Whether you got, decide to get married or not, a romantic spousal type relationship should always be growing. Because remember, we talked about this. If you're not growing, then you're regressing. And we always grow as people. Things about us change and mature, become better, become slower, <laughs> become, uh, you know, different dimensions. Whatever the case might be, there's always some type of change. And that means there's some type of growth, sometimes regression. But you should always have an opportunity whether you've known this person for five minutes or five years, to be able to come back to the table and have just a raw, transparent, beautifully vulnerable discussion about where everybody and everything is. And that's a great way to cultivate trust and to cultivate love and to cultivate intimacy and just a deeper way of communicating with each other. It reminds me of that consummate love triangle where you have a deep three-dimensional love, a consummate love when you have that well 
rounded relationship where you're intimate, there's passion and there's commitment. And you can talk about all these various things openly without fear of repercussions or some argument sparking because you're reigniting some old fight because you've already been there. You've already went from deep to shallow. So now all the things that you're bickering about is the shallow stuff. Like, are we going to use ketchup or mayonnaise on the sandwich? You know, that kind of stuff. And that becomes more fun ultimately because you've gone through the more important things first so you can enjoy it from start to finish rather than come to huge devastating roadblocks that may never ever clear up and then you might force the relationship which ultimately breaks one or two or both of you or the relationship breaks entirely and it's called a breakup because it's broken and whether it's fixable or not I don't know but I can tell you if you take a step back if you take a look at relationships and how we connect with each other from a behavioral standpoint we can very easily predict if something will likely work or likely not work just based on how many areas of friction there are so I'm encouraging you wherever you are in all of this wherever you are in connecting with people around you take a look at yourself and take a look at where your cards lie Take a look at where you even have self-conflict. See what you can do to resolve those things so you're not fighting yourself all the time. Because if you're like me, that happens all the time. I'm very hard on myself because I'm a perfectionist. I like to make sure everything works perfectly. In fact, this is probably my 27th take of this third episode of Relate Nate. And I've committed to myself, this is it. I'm done. So hopefully I've recorded somewhere around eight minutes to push this through. And I hope you found some value in this episode. And we'll continue on this kind of relational path into February because, you know, February is that month of love where Valentine's Day is. And there's a lot of very interesting things in how we connect with each other as human beings that are so helpful if you were just to take a step back and take an honest look at just the human dynamic dynamics behind it and when we become better connectors we become better at relationships and ultimately that will bring happiness and fulfillment and joy rather than conflict and despair once again thank you so much for joining me for this third episode of relate Nate. i'm still trying to get my feet under me and get a good rhythm here once again i'm inviting you musicians and djs anybody that produces any kind of background music if you want your stuff featured on this channel please let me know just send me a message send me an email and i'd be happy to upload it thanks again for watching Looking forward to the future episodes as I'm putting all this stuff together on relationships moving into February and we'll be talking a lot about what we can do during some of these high emotional times and holidays that we can strengthen each other rather than stress each other out. All right, that's it for now. Take care.